Immortal Works Flash Fiction Friday, Episode 3. The Choice Agency by Mike Clough. Read for you by John Grundvig. Has the subject been chosen? Yes, we have the perfect candidate. Is he intellectually challenged? Sufficient for our purposes. When do we begin? Today. Boy, you just dumb or butt stupid. Jim sat in the hard metal chair looking at his boss across the desk. It took Jim a moment to realize how limited the options were for his answer. Uh, Mr. Croggs, I know I made mistakes, but... But stupid then. Mr. Croggs' scowl grew deeper, which Jim wouldn't have thought possible. The man's small nose had become almost completely swallowed up by his scrunched brow and pursed lips. Jim wondered if it would disappear entirely. Boy! Jim startled out of his observation. Yes, Mr. Croggs? Yes, what? I didn't ask another question. Mr. Croggs leaned back in his chair. Been sitting here watching you stare at me like some idiot. Yes, Mr. Croggs. Yes, Mr. Croggs. Yes, Mr. Croggs. The older man leaned forward. Boy, if you weren't the senator's son, I would have thrown you out on the street your first day here. Yes, Mr. Croggs. This is a mannequin production facility. We produce dummies. Doesn't mean you gotta be one. Mr. Croggs held up a plastic arm with six fingers attached. I don't even know how you could have done this, but... The old man rubbed his forehead with his free hand and sighed. Just go home. I'm fired? Jim's stomach clenched and tears gathered in his eyes. You crying? Mr. Croggs looked disgusted and a little apprehensive. Boy, you are just too much trouble. Come back in a week. Mr. Croggs rose out of his chair and walked Jim to the door. Let's call it a mental vacation. Something you're good at already. Thanks, Mr. Croggs. Jim shook his boss's hand and left the office. Jim walked the rest of the way out of the facility and into a humid Richmond air. He didn't quite understand Mr. Krog's last comment. Must have been a compliment. He walked to his scooter and grabbed his helmet. Before he could put it on, a black SUV parked right next to him. A man in a dark suit stepped out of the passenger door and approached Jim. James McCarty! The man took off his sunglasses, put them in his jacket, and shook Jim's hand. Wow, said Jim. That's my name, too. The man smiled. No, James, you and I don't share names. You can call me Bill. Oh, Jim smiled back. How can I help you, Mr. Bill? Step into my car with me for a moment. Bill gestured back to the SUV. I don't know. Jim rubbed his head and walked towards the SUV. Dad said people might try to take... No, James. Bill opened the rear door and ushered Jim in. We aren't kidnapping you. Oh, good. Jim bounced up and down on the leather seat. Nice car. Where are we going? Nowhere for now, James. Bill sat next to Jim. Bill pointed at two people in the front seats. A big Polynesian man and a very pretty Latina woman. Both shook Jim's hand. These are my fellow associates continued Bill. You may call them Bill C and Bill D. How cool, Jim said. You all have the same names. You all family? In a way, yes. Bill poured Jim a drink of water. In fact, we want you to be a part of our family. But my name isn't Bill, Jim said after gulping down all of the water. Oh, we wouldn't dare change your name, James McCarty, said Bill D., Jim liked the way she smiled and how she said his name with a slight accent. Jim yawned and relaxed against the seat. Bill D. is right. We think that you would be happiest with your original name. So let me explain why we are here. We think you are a special young man, James. We see potential in you, James. We think that with the right guidance, you could go places, James. Go real far, James. Jim yawned again, his eyelids heavy. Like Idaho? No, James. We were talking about you achieving great things. Sounds nice, Jim said, trying not to close his eyes. 
What do I have to do? He watched Bill C. hand the briefcase to Bill. Keep this a secret. Let the sedative we gave you work. Bill opened the case right before Jim closed his eyes completely. Jim barely heard the next words that Bill said. We have to make a few changes to your brain. When Jim came to, he was sitting on the asphalt next to his scooter. The black SUV nowhere to be seen. He stood up on shaky legs and removed the card on his scooter seat. The card read, Thank you, the Choice Agency. Those bills sure were nice, Jim put on his helmet. I wonder if I will ever see them again. No, James, Bill's voice sounded in Jim's head. Never see, but we will always be with you, James. We will take you places, James. 21 years later. What a historic day in our country, said the reporter. I am here at the inauguration of President James McCarthy. It is no surprise that this illustrious man, a war hero, winner of the Nobel Prize, and a true American was elected to office. He truly is a man without error, a man to lead our country with his wise choices. Wait, he is speaking. My fellow Americans. Jim waited for the next words from Bill, but for the first time in a long time he heard nothing in his head. Bill? Congratulations. Thank you. How much damage do you think you will cause without guidance? A lot. Thanks for listening to Immortal Works Flash Fiction Friday, Episode 3. If you have a piece of flash fiction, 1,500 to 2,000 words, that you'd like to submit, please email it to contact at immortal-works.com.